Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Henderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. Hey, I'm Lynn, your co-host. Let's cure for seeing get underway. The business world we live in is quite different than what it was just a few months ago. Today, non-essential businesses are mandated to work remotely in hopes of combating the rise of the health pandemic. Panicked IT departments, as well as CEOs and founders, are scrambling to ensure their employees can access company servers and communicate with customers and colleagues alike. Businesses no longer have years or even months to consider a shift in having employees work from home. It's now a matter of survival to keep things moving. To help us with key success factors to making remote working work, we're joined today by Jed Ayers. CEO of iGel, a leading software solutions company. So hello, Jed Ayers. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Well, hi, Lynn, and hi, Richard. Thanks for having me today. Appreciate it. And from the uh, beautiful Golden State, California, Bay Area? Yeah, I'm calling to you. I've uh, been in my home, I think, about 60 days now, um, just north of the Golden Gate Bridge in Marin County. How can it get any better or any worse for being quarantined? That sounds like a perfect place to be kind of by the bay and near the ocean and probably got a nice view and so uh what the heck well the view has actually gotten better there's a mountain about 50 miles from here uh in the east bay mount diablo which suddenly i can see every single day like it's in my backyard Uh, is it because is there less pollution now from there's not as much uh commuting going on exactly that whole east bay kind of you know corridor has quieted down and yeah all of a sudden I've lived in this house for 11 years, and all of a sudden I could see this mountain range <laughs> right there. So, yes, there are some silver linings to this whole thing. Hey, the world's getting better maybe in some ways with COVID-19. But anyway, you've got uh, some uh, interesting advice to share. So let's uh, let's get right into it with uh, making remote working work. Okay, well, let's talk about the pandemic impact. Jed, how is this shaping the future of remote working? Well, honestly, I think uh, the sort of future of how people work is going to be changed forever by this, right? And what we've seen shattered is sort of the condition, the mental condition that, you know, people need to slog off to a big building and, you know, sit in front of a screen and then slog home for an hour, right? Um, You know, wasting two hours of their life, right? And I think there was a lot of entry-level positions and back office positions that were just sort of hard-coded, like you have to be in the office to do this job. And I think what's been remarkable is uh, with shelter in place and you know, hundreds of millions of people having to try to recalibrate to work from home, uh, we've seen you know, that a whole bunch of positive things have happened, right? Wow, the world didn't fall apart. They were actually able to do their job. And in some cases, they're doing it much better than they did before. They're happier. They're, 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 the, the metrics that you know, they're measured on are uh, all coming in very nicely in terms of response times and customer staff and that type of thing if it's a call center. So yeah, I think you're going to see, you know, the future of work is changed forever, right? And the future of people uh, sort of going to a big building with 7,000 people in it, mm-hmm. I think uh, this is going to change. We're starting to get to that 1960s cartoon, the Jetsons. A um, couple things I see is that, um, you know, not only are, you know, jobs that you would traditionally think can work at home are working, will be working more from home, but something you touched on is it's actually expanding the number of jobs where they, they might not have ever been worked from home, but you can work them from home, uh, you know, provided you've got good digital. I mean, I think it was a fraction of the uh, population that was allowed to work from home. And it's certainly, we're a German based company headquartered in Germany and six out of 10 people in Germany had never worked from home. Right. Um, and so like, in the U.S., we're a little bit more used to the sort of, you know, maybe uh, you got to work on Monday or Friday at home and you had certain things you could do from home. Uh, but, you know, the idea that hundreds of millions of people suddenly working from home, it's been, a, I think, a radical, uh, you know, sort of science project almost, right? That, hey, wow, this is right. possible. I think, you know, we'll get into the technology a little bit, but I think there's a, there's a cultural aspect of it. Even if you can get the technology wired up to support it, can you, can, you know, are there going to be a lot of people out there that can't culturally or from a personality standpoint, make that transition? Right. 
I agree with you. I mean, I think that we're all wired for human interaction, right? And we all get energy from being around other people. And there's great collaboration that communication that happens in hallways and when we come together. But I think there's a rethinking in terms of, all right, do I really need that every day? Right? Is there more intentional you know, places where I can do that that are better for my personal life, my, the planet, and ultimately the, the company benefits also, right? Um, from a cost perspective. I mean, that's a good point. It doesn't have to be one or the other. It's, you know, right. how, do you, how do you blend it and have more working from home, but you can still be office-based? Exactly. Well, you know, ease of technology is a huge enabler to working remote. Jed, please just briefly outline the technology that supports successfully working from home, you know, during this pandemic. Well, I think probably the thing to think about is just kind of go back 10 years and think about all the things that didn't exist, you know, 10 years ago that are here today that actually have made this possible, right? Because if this would have happened 10 years ago, we would have probably been in a different predicament, right? So when you think about the cloud and the fact that people you know, can get their email securely and they can do calls like the one we're doing right now um, over home broadband connections with video, with great audio, and they can do it securely. You know, these advancements are, you know, what's making this possible, right? So the fact that um, I, can I can access my applications, my data, and I can do it securely um, with a high fidelity experience, that's really, uh, you know, what, what people need need to be, be able to do this. And I think that's where, you know, innovation and technology over the last decade has, has put us in a place that actually allowed the world to continue on for the most part. Um, well, from the person working from home, they basically need the, some technology to access, which is pre you pretty much everybody already has. And then, um, you know, be able to get that access through, um, through broadband and, and connecting into what you have to connect to. Absolutely. All right. So part of what we, uh, what we deliver at iDell is we're the underlying secure operating system. So we work with Microsoft, we work with Amazon, we work with VMware, we work with Citrix. And these are four companies that are in this sort of bu bubble of companies that are actually really benefiting from all these people having to scramble to work from home um, with their cloud delivered desktops, cloud delivered applications um, and you know, desktop and platform as a service solutions, right? And so, you know, what we provide at iGel is sort of that underlying operating system that sits underneath that, that can be secure and managed. It's actually a Linux operating system. So yeah, they, I think, you know, it's uh, obviously table stakes to be able to get your email and, um, you know, be able to do a Zoom call and to be able to do those things securely or some kind of a Zoom equivalent, Teams or WebEx. Uh, go to meeting, log me in. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, these are these are the table stakes, I think, um, for any organization to be able to do that. And we kind of see this in phases, right, where people sort of picked up any device and scrambled home, especially the people that had never worked from home. And then, you know, they sort of tried to get it configured and working. And now what we see is people realizing, whoa, this is going to be a lot longer than we thought it was going to be, right? Um, right. What was maybe going to be a couple weeks is now – you know, hey, we're going to be here for 60 days and we may be, you know, a much bigger portion of our time going forward, even if we open the offices up, may still be spent at home. So I think that's where organizations are having to look at longer term kind of strategies to really pro provide a, you know, a high fidelity experience for their employees at home. Yeah, you also mentioned a good point that, you know, coming on with different devices, because you'll have all kinds of different devices from, you know, different iPads and cell phones, mobile phones, desktops. And, you know, decade ago, they might not have all worked together. Now, from what I'm seeing, particularly with Zoom, what we're on now is it, it's seamless that whatever device you're connecting in, if it's done right, uh, will we'll enable that access that you need to working remotely. Yeah, I think the people that have set out and been working on this for you know three decades, the people like Citrix and Microsoft to do this, the, the nirvana has always been any device, any application or data, anywhere, right? It's like this any, any promise of any. Mm -hmm. So online connections mean online security issues. Jed, how can we securely work from home? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's actually one of the big sort of, you know, um, challenges right now, as you saw, even in the corporate world on the corporate network with the best firewalls and the best uh, people working 
you know, there's been massive breaches over the over the last years, right? And ransomware and uh, some of the things that just are pervasive, even in the most secure large enterprise organizations, they're subject to being you know uh, compromised. And so you take hundreds of millions of people and you put them at home um, on a broadband connection, right? This creates a whole new layer of challenges. And my prediction is you are going to see through this COVID some situations where data hackers are able to you know, access you know, very uh, confidential information and or meet, you know, listen in on meetings, those types of things, right? And so this is where uh, you know, I think people are circling back around today and they're trying to figure out, all right, if, if I'm gonna have thousands of workers at home, how do I make sure that what they're doing is, um, is secure, right? And so these are technologies like VPN, like virtual data, uh, desktop infrastructure where you kind of know, okay, there's no data on that device. The uh, packets are secured all the way to the data center or the cloud. So I think that's really the next step that we're in right now is that, you know, organizations of all sizes have to make sure that um, the, the devices, they understand, you know, what they're running, how they're accessing it, and that entire architecture is secure. What are some of the things just, you know, we could really go down a rabbit hole like this for a long time, but just basically, what are some of the things that the employee working from home needs to be aware of for, to maintain security, whatever? Yeah. You know, well, I think a lot of it's the same things that you got to be aware of when you're uh, in the office, right? Because a lot of what I've seen early on is the same kind of things you see um, in the office where people are trying to do phishing and you're getting all kinds of uh, email attacks, right, where they want you to click on things and mm-hmm. um, they look very legitimate sometimes and of course they're quite creative. So I think clearly, you know, the hygiene around uh, email is a, uh, a big piece of this, right? Hygiene about um, when and where you're accessing data, right? And hopefully, you know, the ideal scenario here is that, you know, none of your data is living on a device, right, that could somehow right. be compromised. I think that's the that's the hygiene and the architecture that we support, right, which is data lives in a cloud or a data center somewhere and it's secure, right? So if a device is somehow uh, compromised, there's no way for it to get into the, uh, you know, anyone to get into, the, into that uh, confidential data. I think the other thing is uh, passwords, authentication, right, like really making sure that all the same uh, authentication methodologies are used at home uh, when people yeah, are Yeah, one thing I've seen on the passwords, it, it, like I was in the military before, just retired, but we'd gone to a system of chips and everybody was, you know, we'd gotten away from passwords and chips. And I thought that would get adapted more quickly in the corporate world, but it's still, there's still a heavy reliance on user names and passwords. And I think that's, that's gonna be the future for a while, particularly for small business. Right. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of innovation that's going to happen in the security space, especially remote security across, uh, you know, the types of connections that we're coming across today, right? Uh, broadband. Mm-hmm. So I think you have companies like Okta and Microsoft, you know, where they're really looking at sort of a, an identity, a, a personal identity that follows you across all your devices, right? Uh, across all the cloud uh, clouds mm-hmm. that you might be connecting to, right? And things that do include, um, you know, uh, something you know, something you have, right? Certainly, we all carry these phones around, right? Um, right. <laughs> yeah. Some of the uh, the the actual uh, bio technology as well, right? Retina scanning, fingerprint scanning. You're starting to see some of those things creep into how people log into devices. So yeah, I think one thing I'm very confident about, and you can see I have this belief shirt on, right? It's part of a message that we're delivering at IGEL, right? Which is, you know, there is some positive positive that can come out of this, right? In terms of innovation. Hey, stand up a, stand up a little bit for a second so we get a good shot on that, that T-shirt. Yeah, right. so uh, <laughs> we're actually giving these away because it's like just sort of our gift to the world. Of, if you go to IGEL.com slash believe, we'll send you one. But the idea is that, hey, you know, when you think about some of the biggest innovations that have come out of the world, uh, you know, they say we rode into World War II on horses and came out splitting the atom, right? So, mm-hmm. well, this is an invisible enemy this time around. I would suggest to you that human intellect and innovation, and sort of uh, the positive that can come through this and out, out of this, albeit, you know, there's human toll and there's economic carnage, could be very good for the world, right? And, and we're seeing it out our own windows, right? Like I said at the beginning of this, that you know, the planet 
is uh, is recovering in a certain way, right? And we're rethinking. I'm a guy who you know put 250,000 miles a year on a plane, and I've been in one place for 60 days, right? And <laughs> right. How, many, how many meetings? You missed you miss that flying you used to hate. You know, yeah. hey, I just had like a question. This is like a pet peeve for me. I, I don't know this, this email phishing and clicking email links. Well, I just don't understand why they can't get a handle on that where someone, you know, somehow can check these websites. You, you click a link that's going back to some, you know, server in Russia where they're suddenly going to encrypt all your data and, and we, what do they call that ransomware? It, I would just, I, I, I keep thinking there's going to be a solution come along that will, you know, you, if some, you know, you're in an office and you click a link and it's going to one of the ransomware sites that somehow they're able to, to get in between there and intervene, but it's just not there. I, that's one of the things I keep hearing about in the small business tech world is just nightmares with ransomware. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think some of these things that infect a, uh, the windows operating system, you know, that, that, that is part of the reason why I is flourishing, right? It's just, um, you know, a very large, very complex, very powerful operating system, right? But it has to be patched and managed and secured um, on every device. And so part of the future that we see is actually a world where you have a very light, very small, but very secure read-only operating system, right? So when you think about the types of things that happen with uh, malware uh, getting into an operating system, those things are, are nearly impossible with a read-only firmware, right? Oh, they true. have checksums. So when it's booting, it's, if it doesn't match how it was built, it just doesn't boot at all, right? And so these types of sort of very hardened, uh, secure, stable, easy to manage operating systems on devices, then connecting to the cloud services, we think this is the architecture of the, of the future. And honestly, you can see it borne out with Google, right? Mm -hmm. Think about Chromebooks. That's sort of a, a light, secure, you know, small operating system connected to the Google infrastructure. And that's kind of what IGEL does. We do it um, you know, across all these. Yeah, that, that's, so it's getting kind of a level of the typical small business owner, the kind of technology. But the important point is there's a lot going on here. And that you with know, people working from home, this is going to impact you, these technologies. So try to maintain a, you know, a basic aware of this. But kind of moving on to one subject here, you know, remote employee management does require entirely new skill sets. Jeff, what are some, you know, expert work from home tips for managers, particularly during COVID-19? Well, I think the first thing is uh, empathy and just sort of keeping it real, right? Like it's sort of actually uh, lean into the fact that, you know, people have kids that they're trying to, you know, put through school and feed that are in their houses, right? And they're, there, there's dogs in the picture or whatever, right? So I think you have to have certain certain, certain level of empathy for each other. I think you have to have a, 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 an enhanced level of communication, right? Um, in terms of just, yeah, you know, we have 450 people in the company. We're um, trying all kinds of new ways to communicate with them. Um, I think obviously we got, you have to try to help them with the setups, right? And I think part of the challenge is 60 days going into the same place, looking at the <laughs> same Zoom meetings, you know, you have to, uh, yeah. you know, put some tips out there on things to do. And actually, IGEL has partnered with this lady, Vicki Norris. If you go to our website, you'll see some of the tips and tricks. She's a TV personality who, for the last 20 years, has studied working from home. And mm -hmm. obviously, there's a mental component to it, right, in terms of, you know, how do you operate in a world where you may not only you're not going to see your colleagues other than virtually, right? What are you, what are you seeing? Is it tougher for employees to make the, that human transition or the technology i would think it's tougher to manage the human you know i think it's the human part of it and honestly we just made an investment in an app called headspace for all our employees and we've had almost uh, uh two-thirds of the of the population of the company has taken us up on using it and it's really about like you know it's meditate it's the whole mental part of you know how, how do you uh stay focused how do you uh you know are there little exercises and things you can do to get up. And I mean, I take it to taking calls, walk, walking in on a walk, right? And um, moving my office from one place to the other uh, throughout the day. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's all kinds of tips out there. Of course, being in a comfortable place, I think not everybody has the luxury of that, right? So you have to probably- Well, I mean, we can get into, you know, there's a lot of details like, you know, you need to set up a distinct space and have some kind of soundproofing. And, you know, there's a lot of different, things but you know in this case a lot of 
you know, a lot of people just have been put working from home and they suddenly don't, uh, you know, they don't have anything. Uh, they don't have any right. kind of physical setup. And, you know, those maybe start at the kitchen table, but, you know, they've got to work through that. And what we were talking about earlier, just that, you know, well, you know, you get up, you go to the water cooler, you talk to your coworker. There's this, these subconscious routines you go through and suddenly, you know, it's the dog and the TV set. So I think the human, right. the human connection transition is, is more challenging. It is. I mean, we see people doing uh, virtual happy hours right after this call. I'm actually dialing into to one of them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been shocked at people, you know, they like to get on one of these calls and not have to talk about work, right? To do trivia or just to talk about how people are doing. And I think that's the other tip I would give everybody out there in a leadership role, right, is... I usually start my one-on-one -on -one meetings with, with people, you know, Hey, how are you? How are you doing with all this? Right. And the, just sort of keeping that sort of personal checkpoint with people because there is a mental part of working from home right now as people that have never done it before, especially, you know, are trying to figure out, you know, it's like groundhog day. Right? <laughs> no, you mentioned the uh, virtual happy hour. It's funny. I, I, did one of those uh, last week and it was, you gotta be kidding, a virtual happy hour on Zoom. And I clicked in, it, was, it wasn't it was that bad. I mean, it was actually got to be kind of fun and they're having another one and I'm actually looking forward to going to it. So yeah, well, know. it's only uh, 1.30 here. So it's five o'clock in the East Coast in a half an hour. So any excuse to drink at two o'clock in the afternoon. I'll All right, well, we better, we better move to wrapping this podcast up so you can uh, enjoy that happy hour. <laughs> Okay, so do you have any specific tips on how remote workers can get creative with their work from home setup? Yeah, I mean, I think people just have to figure out how to get comfortable, right? And I think every job has different requirements. And one thing we've done is, um, you know, as this is dragged on, we've told people, look, you know, we'll, we'll get you the right chair, we'll get you the right monitors, we'll get you uh, the right lighting um and those types of things to help them right and and there are a lot of things you can do that aren't super expensive right um and so yeah i would just I, as a as a business owner w when you think about your most valuable assets they're your pe your people right so making the right investments in them to make sure they can be productive um do a couple point bring out something you mentioned earlier about moving around throughout the day do you do you like doing that you know kind of going to I one do. place working and then working in another place is I, I haven't really heard of that before, but that sounds like that could be a pretty good idea to break the day up. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it definitely helps the mental part of it, right. Where um, I've even taken to, I installed a, a router out in my backyard so that um, yeah, I knew I had a really strong signal out there because you yeah, have sunlight and that does help, right. Just being out in, in, in the in the world this yeah I, I would say breaking things up a little bit is hi highly recommended great well Jenner, it's been a great discussion on working better from home during the era of COVID-19 do you have any final points you'd like to share no I just I guess tell everybody out there to stay positive we're going to get through this believe is our, our message right uh and you know be kind to each other that that's how we're uh, we're all going to come through this better I believe that uh, some good positive changes are going to come out of this. Jen Ayers, thank you for being a wonderful guest on the Home Business Podcast. Thank you. Um, my pleasure. To learn more about Jed Ayers and the software solutions from iGel, visit iGel.com or our podcast website for more information on guests. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our website, homebusinessmag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising, subscribe to our newsletter, Please visit our sponsors. For more information, visit homebusinessmag.com or the expo at homebusinessexpo.com. I'm Richard Kapmanderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then. Make it a great home-based biz day.